Well, it's Sunday, and that means it's time for another Hook of the Week. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Let's take a look at our bucket of useful treasures and see if we can find a likely candidate for this week's hook. But let's see if we can avoid last week's struggle by avoiding anything that's tool steel. Well, what looks good to you this week? This one? No, not that one. This one. This piece of half-inch square bar? Sure, let's give it a try. Well, it looks like you helped me pick out a piece of half-inch square bar, or roughly 13 millimeter square bar, roughly 10 inches long. And I think this is one. Let's change the entire dimensions of this piece of steel. Let's draw it out long and flat in one direction, and square taper in the other direction. Then we'll make a hook that hangs on the wall, curves up and then down, and makes the hook end. If it's big enough, this will be good for hanging a house plant on the wall or or on the post for your porch roof or something like that. I think I'll start with the square tapered end and that will be the end that the actual hook is formed on. Let's go over the horn, that'll be a lot faster. It's a real good exercise in just getting a nice clean taper. And now we can hold on to that square section. And from here out I want it to flare and taper. Taper in one dimension, flare in the other dimension. Kind of round this end up a little bit. If we can forge a nice end on this, we won't have to do any filing, or at least not much filing. As this gets to the shape I want, I'm going to chamfer the edges just a little bit.
So we've taken our 10 inch piece of bar and drawn it out to 15 and a half inches, which looks like it's 390 millimeters. I think this needs a couple of holes punched in it. I'm going to try and punch these holes large enough for a quarter inch lag bolt so this can be very securely mounted to the, the wall. Yeah, this may not be hot enough. But we will see. Also a little bit off center there, so I think I'll see if I can correct it from the back side. Not always the best idea, but sometimes you can get away with it. And the fact that it's fairly cold at this point means I'm shearing the slug out, and sometimes that's good. And sometimes it doesn't want to shear, but this time it did. And if necessary, I will drill these out then. I'm going to pick the side I think looks the best and put my touch mark on it. should be done with that end. Unless I decide we need to do a little filing there, but right now it looks pretty darn good. Just want to do a little bit more cleaning up on this end. Make the transition from one taper flow into the other one nicely. And lightly round up the end. Not, not necessarily perfectly round, but heavily chamfered corners anyways. And this hook I want to put my show side down while I form the little curl here. That's because it gets kind of a double hook on it. And then with the show side up I'll start bending the what will be the actual hook. I've cooled my little curl so I don't mess it up. I'll just shape the hook over the horn. There's always lots of way to shape the hooks. You can use a, a mandrel. I want to bend this back, but I'm actually going to start here so that I don't mess up my other hook. This is one that we might go to bending forks for, but we'll see. So, it's frequently a way to get things done. So you can see what we're going for here. That's going to take just a little bit more bend. Well, I can certainly persist doing this over the horn, but sometimes just using the right tool for the job is way better. This is one place our thinner material and our hole both kind of fight us because that, they both make it want to bend more in that spot and not so much where I want it to bend, which is back up in here. But that's pretty close to what I'm after.
I hope you have time to get out to your shop, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.